Hey everybody, JoelImportsToss.com. Welcome back. This is the teardown segment of the project. Go ahead and stick around. We're going to cover uh, kind of our plan of attack on getting this thing disassembled and out of the vehicle. This T5 engine rebuild is brought to you in part by IPDUSA.com. IPD is Import Sauce's go-to for anything we need maintenance or repair on any of our Volvos. One reason we like them, the My Garage feature, where you can add all your Volvos and then quickly shop for particular parts for that vehicle. When you click on anything, it will give you an alert letting you know that this does fit. If there are fitment issues, you will get an alert when adding to cart, and this will let you know what exactly to check out before. This will ensure that you are getting exactly the right part for your Volvo. Second thing we love, kit builders. Here, for popular items, you can get the option to build a kit by adding on additional components that may be related. In many cases, you'll have options for genuine Volvo, or for a more budget-friendly shopping cart, you can add aftermarket. So, when you're going through, you can either select or not select certain components and make sure that you're getting exactly what you need. Lastly, customer service. Their customer service is great. They are U.S.-based here on the West Coast. Uh, anytime we call the phone number, a real live Volvo owner and daily driver answers the phone and works with you on any product questions or help with your shopping cart. If you're getting your parts anywhere else, go ahead and check out IPDUSA.com. Okay, so we uh, no longer have a garage. Uh, we have a 6,000 foot elevation and acreage, but we traded that in for our nice big garage that you may have uh, previously seen on some earlier videos. So we're doing this all right here. This is the final resting place. We have a longer driveway, which is closer to the shop. Uh, and all the tools and air and power and all that. But unfortunately, uh, this is where the car ended up. And to get the car all the way up that hill, which is uh, maybe about 40 feet above me, um, it's just not feasible. Plus this is a nice solid concrete ground. It's gonna be good for jacking up with the cherry picker, taking the weight of it. So this is where it's gonna happen. Um, what we've considered is uh, obviously pulling the whole thing out. What we're gonna do is attack this in kind of maybe four phases. So the first phase that we're going to start uh, today is going to be the teardown, um, and that'll be later in this video, uh, which is going to be taking off everything that we can that's just bolted on. There's a lot of stuff that's in the way that can come off with screwdrivers, 10 millimeters, uh, you know, stuff of that nature. That's going to be the intake. Uh, it's going to be the turbo pipe. It's going to be our batteries already relocated and, and dead at this point. So um, that out of the way, just pretty much any connections that we see on top kind of get stuff out of the way. Um, that would also include the turbo pipe underneath. We may not get underneath today. We may save that for an underneath day. Um, and just kind of getting that up and then get that stuff off of it. Okay, so what we've decided to do is actually take this, uh, even the engine apart, as much as we can while it is still in the vehicle. So this is going to be removing the head uh, and all the components that we can from that. We want to reduce the weight from the overall engine as we can. We're gonna be pulling this out with the M66, uh, the transmission still attached, which we think is gonna be easier, right? Because uh, as we remember from the M66 swap, the only line that goes into it is the, uh, the clutch uh, line that goes in and a uh, two wire harness that goes onto the top of it. Uh, and then just popping the axles and pulling the angle gear out all wheel drive um, and pulling it out because I think that's gonna be a lot easier than what we had to do to struggle to get that transmission in. So pull it out and then pull the transmission, separate it when it's out of the vehicle, put it back on and then drop it in. That way I think is gonna give us uh, less of a headache. So uh, pulling some of that weight is going to be getting that block off and everything that we can there. Um, getting all the wire harnesses, as we mentioned, the first step of getting all those bolt-ons and everything off that we can, intakes, all that. And then at that point, we'll go ahead and drain all the fluids, um, the coolant, uh, the uh, transmission fluid, the engine oil, all of that, and then uh, 
get all the wiring harnesses unplugged. I'm sure we'll find a couple things on there. Um, and, but that's gonna kind of free up some weight. At that point, we may go underneath and we may even pull the oil pan, uh, jack this thing way up, have it on stands and just get the whole bottom half because that's a significant um, amount of height on there. And I think it may not be too much weight, but it's definitely gonna be easier to pull out with that thing off and give us some more uh, movement on there. One thing that we also saw on the donor vehicle when we pulled the M66, is that you can take uh, pretty much a lot of this if we decide to pull the uh, radiator and the core support, all this stuff comes out with bolts. Uh, and we found that very easy to pull the engine and the uh, tranny off of the donor by simply removing the front, hooking it up and just wheeling it straight out. So we may get to that as well. We're gonna kind of see when we get there. But right now, um, that kind of gives you a heads up of what we're thinking, that may change, but we're gonna get going and start on um, getting the intake off, the turbo pipe off, unplugging a lot of these things, pulling the harness, um, and then probably the intake manifold. And then uh, maybe if we got some daylight, we'll get the coil packs, the plugs, all that stuff off as well. So we'll check back in with you when we're at that phase of it. Okay, we are back. That was about, uh, maybe about an hour or so. We were able to get some things off. Uh, vacuum line, strut bar, uh, elevate uh, turbo pipe, elevate intake, elevate um, inlet manifold, uh, the CEM, or is it the ECM? One of those computers. Um, and we've unhooked uh, the complete wiring harness from the top, from the head. So uh, everything that goes up there and uh, we'll pick back up tomorrow. I don't know if we're going to be able to take the full head off because the, uh, the mounts where you would hook up to a cherry picker are on there. So we may still take the uh, timing cover off and um, at least get that out of the way. Maybe pull the, uh, the cam gears or, you know, we may just uh, say that's not that much weight and just pluck it out uh, from there. But we've at least got some things that have to come off off. Um, I do see a few other things that we may uh, mess with tomorrow. Uh, so we'll let you know uh, when we attack that and, uh, and then pick out from there. Okay, everybody, we are back. It has been uh, almost two months since uh, we worked on this. So we had a blizzard and then a mini blizzard come in. Significant damage to the vehicle, uh, insurance claims, repairing it from junkyard. You'll see that in another video unrelated to the rebuild. But uh, after looking at the previous videos that you guys have been uh, caught up on, um, we're just going to pick back up where we left off. We're going to continue unbolting some things in the engine bay. Today, our goal is to try to just get this thing up in the air, drain the oil, drain the coolant, drain the transmission. Um, we are, in fact, going to have to take the engine out in one piece. So really just getting it ready to get uh, hooked up to the cherry picker. So right now, we're going to uh, just keep taking things off and let you know how it goes. This T5 engine rebuild is brought to you in part by ElevateCars.com. If you own a Volvo, you've probably heard the name Elevate, but if you've never been to the website, you should definitely check it out. ElevateCars.com has plenty of performance and styling parts for your Volvo. Simply visit the website, find your particular model, and from there, you can dial into subcategories. One particular part that we're really excited to add from their catalog on this rebuild is the open deck sleeves. But even if you're just getting started, you can definitely find something within your budget to get your Volvo stepped up to the next level. Go ahead and check them out, elevatecars.com. Okay, so the progress, we have the whole wire harness off, shift cables disconnected, all the coolant hoses off, lower boost charge pipe off, all the bolts for the exhaust manifold off. Uh, that's pretty much it. We have the oil, transmission, coolant all flushed. The tranny fluid was brand new. The coolant was brand new. That's just uh, some dirty oil, which probably led to why we're here. Uh, got the uh, coolant reservoir off, and I think where we're going to pick up tomorrow is going to be 
uh, dropping the uh, going over inside here we have to pull the uh, AC compressor disconnect it so that the AC lines are still connected that will just uh, sit down in there uh, two axles one over there one over here we're gonna have to pull the carrier bearing uh, and pop those out and then uh, angle gear for all-wheel drive see if we can get that disconnected lower torque mount uh, which is right there kind of all one assembly with that bracket uh, and then I, don't know, I think that might be uh, close to doing some pluck I'm looking here we see the transmission sits uh, just about half an inch under the uh, let's call it the frame rail over on this side the crank uh, pulley uh, down there same thing so when we pull this out I think we're gonna have to kind of shift it sideways and maybe at an angle pull it up um, we'll figure it out but I think that's still gonna be easier than pulling the transmission off uh, in its current state because that was uh, that was a nightmare but we'll see you know we may end up uh, there as well so uh, that is the progress for today okay we are back at it I think what we are going to do today is try to get the two wheels off get the fender liners off mud flaps off and that will give us access to the axles and then on the passenger side give us access to the uh what is that air conditioning compressor and uh we'll see what we can do with that so we'll start off by breaking the lugs pull those off get our t25s those will go all the way around the fender liner and our 10 millimeter for the two nuts that are right behind the uh shock uh assembly and pop those out on both sides and then we'll catch up and see where we're at okay so we have the wheels off we have the fender liner off and i went ahead and pulled the axle bolts 10 millimeter no 13 millimeter on the axle bolt so got that side eh, took a headlight off i was bored I don't think that's necessary. And there we go. We got our two mud flaps, all our hardware, our tires, fender liners, and now we have access on both sides. Um, what I think I'll do now is probably, uh, I think the axles, we're gonna have to drop uh, some of the suspension uh, or something. So I'll go ahead and uh, pick up on the uh, AC uh, compressor and uh, get that guy off um belt off and uh at least get that off of the uh the block slash uh oil pan okay so two 14 millimeters uh right there that holds the uh what is that i think that's the power steering uh line and that holds that to the block so we got that off and then we're going to follow it around and then there's going to be some more up uh, in the front that we'll show you here to get off and that will free uh, the power steering line from the block. Okay, so everything's off. Again, those two. And then up here in the front, you can, uh, let's see, can I find an angle right there? So you see there's two 10 millimeters there. The one on the left was easily enough from uh, down here. The one on the right, we actually took the oil uh, dipstick tube off which is just one ton millimeter here that goes into the uh, PCV housing and then went down uh, kind of pushed that radiator hose out of the way and was able to get it uh, down there okay those three uh, bolts are off and now our AC compressor is uh, just kind of hanging sitting there resting on the hard uh, power steering lines uh, but everything is uh, free and clear in there on this side. So uh, one step closer. Okay, uh, passenger axle. So again, we already pulled the bolt out. And I think what we're going to do is uh, drop the steering arm on both sides and then swivel that and see if that gives us any play. So we'll see what happens. Uh, 15 millimeter uh, deep socket for that steering arm. Okay, you may notice we were on the passenger side. We started off on the driver's side, but we got jammed up, so we floated over here. 
Uh, first thing we did was we removed two 10 millimeter bolts from the carrier bearing uh, bracket, which you can see uh, where it goes in, right there dead center of the screen. You can also see that we got a ton of goop in there. So this axle was 100% uh, rebuilt and new, new boots, new grease, new everything for the M66 swap maybe 500 miles ago. It doesn't have any visible tears that we've seen, but we're definitely, uh, before it goes back in, we're gonna probably get a boot and uh, you know see what we can get that cleaned up. Um, there is no lock pin inside where it goes way in there into the angle gear, uh, all wheel drive. Uh, front wheel drive, um, I'm not sure, but I'm guessing there's no locking pin uh, or snap ring because the carrier bearing uh, sits inside that and it is uh, notched and it will hold it in place so that there isn't any movement uh, on that, which kind of keeps everything together. Um, but what we found is we had to uh, drop the shock assembly out of um, the hub just to give it enough room to slide that axle boop out and then pull the whole assembly out. Um, so a little further than we wanted to go. Uh, also a note, uh, we can see right there is the factory uh, oil cooler, right? So it's bolted right on the back. We have our coolant uh, loop lines and uh, this has got us thinking that, you know, it may be time to, since everything's coming out and uh, we don't want to go back in there, it doesn't look too difficult, but it may be one more thing that we add on is the uh, Elevate uh, external oil cooler. So we're definitely going to look at that and, and see maybe we want to do that at this point as well. Um, one other thing I noticed that I didn't notice before is when we did the M66 swap, we uh, unbolted the uh, the bolts from the angle gear, which is uh, down there, and the tranny slid out. Um, but what I'm noticing, and I haven't seen this before, is right there, if you look dead center way in there on the angle gear for all wheel drive, there's a bolt and it looks like there's a bracket. Um, if we look at that angle, there's one bolt that goes into the angle gear. And then if you look back to front, you see that other bolt that looks like it goes into the, uh, the yeah, that's the bottom of the block there. Um, and so uh, we may have to get in there and kind of get those off as well. They weren't originally on the list but uh, it's something we may have to address as well since the angle gear will be staying and the transmission and engine will be coming out. So we're gonna hop over to the driver's side, do the same thing, drop the um, hub and then hopefully pull that axle. And I think that'll, uh, you know, that might be enough for today. We may go a little further. Okay, so uh, we dropped the suspension. The axle is out on this side. This side, unfortunately, has a locking clip pin and there's no easy way to get a pickle fork inside of there. So we've been trying some different things such as pry bar with a pickle fork kind of in and then hitting on that. Um, I just remember this being a pain other than just find a good angle and, and really go for it. So we'll let you know what the trick is when we're done here. Okay, so here's the angle we found right there. It's about equal distance between that uh, transmission and the axle. We turned the uh, Volvo factory label uh, towards the front of the car, uh, I don't know why. And we just kind of wedge this thing in and hit down on it pew, pew, with the sledge and that freed it, freed it out. Okay, so we are getting close. What we have left to do is uh, disconnect the oil lines from the turbo and the uh, angle gear from the tranny. Um, so here is the top of the turbo where you see the two lines go in uh, there. This line, uh, let's see, this one down here uh, looks like it's an oil. It goes all the way down and then right underneath the turbo, you can't really see, but it just goes straight into the block down there. And then uh, this guy here, uh, that comes up and around, uh, feeds into that rubber, and then that rubber meets this uh, coolant hose, and that's the one that goes all the way back up to your reservoir. So, I think uh, we don't want to disconnect them here, because then when we try to pull the engine out, uh, well, yeah, uh, this one's gonna have to, the oil one's gonna be kind of caught up. That's fine, we have the replacement to elevate uh, 
soft blind, so we're gonna pull that off. Um, and then this uh, other one, which uh, looks like the coolant, the coolant. Uh, what we may do is, uh, let's see if we can see the full holes, right? So it starts there in the middle of the screen and then ends right there towards the bottom of the screen. Those are like CV clamps. And rather than trying to jack with those, may just cut the hose right in the middle, boop. Um, because while it's out, we need some fresh stuff on there. Uh, so that won't be an issue. Uh, hose clamps. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, those two bolts there are 18 millimeter. I'm guessing it's probably the same on the bottom of the block. So we'll go ahead and see and report back. Okay, we are back. Three lines addressed. The hard line, you see the hole there, that is gone. 17 mil actually. Uh, then the coolant, uh, kind of hard to see with that reflection, but uh, the coolant line snapped right there. Just doing a little bit of draining. And then uh, this line, this hard uh, starts as a soft, goes to a hard, all the way back up to uh, there. Looks like there's some oil residue in there, so I don't know if that's uh, oil or just a breather. Um, and then down here, there's that hard line. We have the Elevate uh, soft line to replace that, but uh, again, 17 mil up top, 19 mil on the bottom. And so now the uh, turbo, turbo exhaust manifold is free. All right, well, you can't really see, but it's just ready to go. Okay, so next on to the angle gear. Okay, so the plan of attack is uh, let's disconnect the tranny mount uh, to the torque mount. That's a 15 right there. And then we got a 13, a 13, a 13. Let's just get this whole thing out of the way. Um, that last 13 up there is, uh, has a little brace because that just holds the uh, wire harness for the, uh, the O2. Um, and then once that's out of the way, we'll be able to have a better look at this angle gear and what, what we need done there. Okay, so we got that off. Uh, 13's in the back, 15 there. And here's what we're looking at now. All right, so I'm trying to remember from the M66 swap, but I believe it's four. One, two, three, and then there's one kind of up there. And then the other thing is that we didn't do before is we can see right there, right? So there's that rusty bracket. It has two bolts that go into the uh, angle gear. And then uh, that one that goes to the block. So take that bracket off, take uh, those four off. I don't know how much room this thing's gonna have to move. I know the collar sleeve or gear is a good amount of distance. Um, so we'll see, but I mean, at that point, we're ready to lift and maybe we can shimmy from there. It took a little longer than expected, but there is the angle gear slid off. Got a brand new collar sleeve in there, all looking good. Let me uh, flip around, show you uh, the nightmare that that was. Ugh. Okay, okay. <coughs> All right, so got this guy off. Started with that, 13s, uh, 15, I think. Uh, then there's actually four bolts for the uh, angle gear, or five. We saw one, two, three, four, but there's a fifth one, uh, 12 o'clock. So we got that from the top. But uh, the one in question, we could not get out because it butts up against the heat shield so uh the heat shield that covers the angle gear 310 mils get that bolt off and then uh shift the heat shield out of the way and then that allowed us to get um all five of those and uh here's the bracket that uh this goes uh oops we're in the shade slash sun right that goes bink bink into the block and then these two go into the angle gear and I just got a pry bar and uh, pried it off. So uh, I think at this point uh, we're going to reset the suspension here so that we can put a tires on and 
uh, drop this thing all the way down so that we have less um, less height to go up when we uh, have to get the engine out. So uh, get that going and then uh, see you in a few. Okay, we are back up top. I think the only thing that is uh, stopping us now is going to be motor mount here. So we will do uh, two bolts, one down there, one down there, one, one. And then we're gonna have to move, uh, take this battery plate off where we have our uh, power uh, thingers. And then there's one big bolt uh, directly in the middle there. Um, and then we're gonna hook up uh, here and here. And then I think what we're gonna do is uh, have the picker there and then uh, just holding the engine. And then we will uh, see if it starts moving up, then we will put the tires back on and slowly uh, put the car back on the ground. And that should give us about uh, a foot or more and we'll probably end up uh, pulling the, the hood uh, shock so that we can push the hood all the way back so we have a uh, full clearance. Okay, so we are hooked up now. We got the motor uh, tranny battery mount off out of the way. We've already loosened up that, uh, that guy. And then over <coughs> on the other side, we've already pulled the top part of the motor mount out. And we are ready, uh, those are loosened just a bit. Just did a quick jack and it did uh, start pulling the engine. So the last line I've been saving is going to be the uh, clutch line, right? So that goes up, swivels through, and right down there, it's the one on the right. Uh, I think we're gonna try to break it over there because if we pull it off here, then we gotta bend that line back. So we'll go ahead and just uh, pull that little clip up disconnect and stick a rag under there. Hopefully we don't lose uh, too much uh, fluid down there. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and see what we do. Okay, a little further. Everything is clear on this side. Uh, got that line broken, but here's our problem. I think we're gonna pull the rest of the tranny mount off, right? If you look, it's trying to hit that frame railish thing and that's just wide enough. So luckily, we can come here and one, two, three, four. Let's see what those are. Uh, 18's a little large, so probably 17. So we'll get this bracket and then that hopefully will uh, get us up a little more. Okay, so we found one more guy. We're like, hey, wait a minute. This exhaust manifold is uh, breaking apart, but it's not staying there. So it looks like right there, where there is another coolant mine that goes back uh, into a hard pipe that goes into the block. So we're right there, same thing. We're just gonna slice it and we'll swap it back out with a uh, brand new hose and clamps uh, when we get there. Okay, well, this goes out. Cherry pickers put away. Tranny's still on there. Definitely easier pointed out with the tranny on it. Um, there's one thing that we did not break off and it is that hole right there. It was a hard line um that goes uh back to the turbo so it just uh popped itself out um but that's one thing to uh right there Ooh. uh to keep in mind uh when you are uh pulling that off uh so let's take a look over here see what we got we'll come through here with a pressure washer and uh, clean everything up. And we're gonna reloom the entire harness with some nice uh, good stuff. Surprised uh, how few bolts. We actually only bagged two sets uh, and just kept the mounts all together. And that's it. Um, we will start the bagging and tagging process here because uh, That'll be our next video, but I think we're gonna start with all the stuff on the outside, right? So the thermostat, the uh, starter, the uh, oil uh, filter housing, alternator, all the pulley uh, tensioners, um, and then after that's off, probably come over to the transmission uh, and you know just start slowly 
hopefully two days or so worth of work. We have all this apart. We can get it to the machine shop. Uh, that's the Elevate uh, Polish Lower Inlet Manifold. We'll go ahead and check that out on our uh, ElevateCars.com. Um, and then take this thing down to the machine shop in pieces.